Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, the Carb Addiction Doc, and today we're going to talk about thyroid disease and thyroid function. So, so poorly understood, so overtreated, and so misunderstood by the public and by our patients. So let's talk about the thyroid comprehensively. First and foremost, there are many good things and many bad things that happen with the thyroid. Let's talk about briefly what the thyroid does. The thyroid is a quintessential quarterback of your immune system, of your hormonal system, of the entirety of the way your body functions in terms of every cell. Because the thyroid is the quarterback, together with insulin, of metabolism. Now, what the thyroid does is it affects your metabolic rate, the rate at which your cells require and burn energy. The rate at which they may burn energy, so it bumps up your heart rate or slows your heart rate down, bumps up your heat index or lowers your heat index, because we are mammals, we maintain euthermia or a standard uh, uh, um, heat index. It governs growth, it governs he tissue healing, it governs cancer surveillance. The thyroid is critical to all of metabolism and thyroid hormone is very tightly regulated in what's called a negative feedback system. We'll talk more about this in a second. But not only is the production and release of thyroid hormone tightly controlled, the interplay of thyroid hormone is critically important in terms of its regulation of all other types of hormones. Now, one of the quintessential mistakes that everybody makes is that we understand that the thyroid hormone controls metabolism. But everything about homeostasis, everything about the way the human body works, is in a biological negative feedback pattern. So what a lot of people have taken to do is to blame their thyroid hormone production as a reason why they're gaining weight or why certain issues are happening to them. Yes, the thyroid gland, the thyroid hormone in interplay with so many other hormones absolutely does regulate metabolic rate. But as part of that regulation, it also regulates appetite. So when your thyroid is hyperactive, you may lose a little bit of weight, and but Typically, we demand and eat a lot more. And if we're eating real food, we keep pace. When your thyroid is a little bit underactive or it's under low pressure, we tend to gain a little bit of weight, but it's just a little bit. It's a fraction. It doesn't make us obese. But that thyroid dysfunction also has a negative feedback, and we eat less, and we eat less often. So to blame the thyroid for your obesity or for uh, um, weight gain is ludicrous unless, unless you can provide for me, and I'm sure some smart ass is going to do this. I'd love to see it. But if you can show me videotape or a short streaming clip of as soon as you fall asleep, little hands coming out of your neck and picking up cake and putting it in your mouth, then we can blame the thyroid, your thyroid gland for your obesity. But absent of that video, your thyroid gland is not responsible for your obesity. And what I'm talking about obesity is morbid, uh, excessive gaining of weight to the point of harm. Yes, you may gain a few pounds or may lose a few pounds. That happens with everybody. Okay, there's a biologic reason for that. And it's governed by the interplay of those thyroid hormones. So what happens? The problem with uh, the thyroid hormone is that in the modern system, it is a complex system. All these hormones interplay. And when you screw up one hormone, it affects everything. Think of it as a domino effect. And the hormone that we screw up the most with a standard American diet is a hormone called insulin. Now, insulin governs steroid hormone synthesis. So high levels of insulin block cortisol, they block uh, um, human growth hormone, they block testosterone, they block estrogen, they block vitamin D3, they block bile acid formation. 
and they affect by production all the hormones that are products of cholesterol going downstream to those hormones, which are all the ones I've talked about. Insulin blocks that first step. Those are the steroid hormones where cholesterol is the precursor. T3, T4, your thyroid hormone, is not a cholesterol precursor. It's a tyrosine or an amino acid or a peptide precursor. And you combine a tyrosine in a couple of units with iodine to form T3, to form T4, and then T3 that gets released in the active form. But the steroid hormones have direct control and interplay with those thyroid hormones. So when your insulin level is, is elevated and you become insulin resistant and none of those steroid hormone pathways are functioning properly, that radically affects your thyroid hormone and thyroid hormone release. Remember, it's a negative feedback pattern. And typically what happens is when you are insulin resistant, the more insulin you produce, the lower the release and the lower the production of thyroid hormone is. So when doctors take somebody who has metabolic disease, which is the disease of insulin resistance, metabolic disease is the disease of insulin resistance. It is the eye of the needle to all of these. That insulin resistance blocks thyroid hormone release and production, and your T3 and T4 levels are low. So when you measure them in, in blood work, and the doctor says, oh, you've got hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is not a diagnosis. Hypothyroidism are numbers on a test. It doesn't tell us what's happening with the thyroid. It is not diseased. The disease is what you put in your face, chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption that has screwed up your entire metabolic system. But then what they do is they see that your vitamin, uh, that, you know, that your uh, thyroid T3 and uh, T4, thyroxine and triiodothyronine levels are low. And what do they do? They put you on a pill. And they either put you on a pill to supplement your T4 or your T3. That's doing shit for your metabolic system. It is doing nothing. It's making them feel better. Oh, we fixed this number. It's like putting people on D3. D3 is low because of insulin resistance. Now you're putting yourself on D3. Well, why the hell is my D3 still low? Because you haven't fixed the problem. And the problem with by far the majority of people is hypothyroidism related to insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is directly caused by chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption. So instead of putting you on a bunch of medication that's very, very difficult to come off, because once you're on that medication, it suppresses your thyroid's ability to produce the medication. That's what thyroid hormone does. Now it's going to be impossible or very, very difficult to reverse that situation. And over 75% of the people that come into my office have a diagnosis of paper hypothyroidism without a true diagnosis. One of the other diagnoses that we see more and more commonly, particularly in women, is something called Hashimoto's disease, which is autoimmune disease of the thyroid, where at first they get an elevation in, in release and production and then a drop, and they've got Hashimoto's uh, antibodies to the thyroid gland. Well, that ramp up of the inflammatory system is also in large part related to insulin resistance. All the autoimmune diseases are part of disruption of the, inflammatory, uh, of the inflammatory cascade, the inflammatory system, and you produce all these excessive antibodies that are now attacking your production of thyroid hormone. So while Hashimoto's uh, may need to be treated with suppression, I've had many, many patients where they get into fat-adapted ketosis, their Hashimoto's goes away. How do we monitor that? We measure the thyroid antibodies. And slowly over time, those thyroid antibodies get better and they go away. And you can potentially start producing normal thyroid if you slowly, you don't stop your thyroid hormone right away. You slowly reduce your thyroid hormone and allow your natural thyroid hormone production to take over. Because Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. And while not a panacea, the majority of autoimmune disease is severely exacerbated, possibly even caused by metabolic dysfunction. And that metabolic dysfunction comes from insulin resistance. The way the thyroid gland should work, and, and let's put all of this together in a picture, okay? In your midbrain, in the hypothalamus in the midbrain, you release two hormones that affect thyroid function. There's many more, but I'm going to focus on two. One is thyroid-releasing hormone, TRH. TRH goes to your pituitary gland, and elevated TRH levels triggers 
your pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary, to release TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone goes through the bloodstream to the thyroid gland and triggers the thyroid gland to produce and release T4, which then gets converted to T3, which are the two active components of your thyroid hormone in every cell that they access in your body. Now, as your T3 and T4 levels get released into the bloodstream as they rise, there's a negative feedback pattern that goes back to your pituitary gland to TSH and dampens release of TSH. So you've got this negative feedback between TSH and T3 uh, and, and T3 and T4. Okay? Now, what's the precursor of that thyroid hormone? It's an amino acid called tyrosine. And tyrosine combines with iodine, so therefore amino acids, protein, and iodine are critically important. Iodine, particularly as iodized salt, critically important in your diet to make to have enough substrate there for thyroid hormone production. But if you've got adequate iodine and tyrosine, you can produce T3, T4. Now, what else happens to tyrosine? Tyrosine also is the precursor for L-dopa, dopamine. Okay, so all of these interplay of these hormones in the brain are affected. Remember we talked about that TRH, the thyroid releasing hormone that triggers TSH? Well, everything in the human body is, is controlled by uh, negative feedback. And let's link this all together. What is the negative feedback hormone also produced in the midbrain that affects TRH levels that brings them down? Serotonin. 5 hydroxytryptophan becomes serotonin, becomes melato uh, 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 melatonin. S uh, serotonin, which is our, one of our dominant uh, uh, um, endorphins, controls TRH. You see how all these things interplay? And serotonin levels are critically important to controlling dopamine levels in our brain. Dopamine fasting, dopamine release. Dopamine is the, is the hormone that creates focus. Serotonin is the thing that relaxes that focus for a few seconds and uh, allows dopamine build up again. Excuse me. That was a serotonin moment right there. I've been focused on telling the story. I had a little serotonin break. Now my brain can refocus. All of that interplays, and it interplays with TRH, TSH, and thyroid hormone production. All of that interplays. Okay? And sugar is a direct trigger of that serotonin dopamine cycle. Sugar is a serotonin releaser, and eventually we become immune to that. That's carbohydrate addiction. Wow, this is just blowing my mind. It's chaos. But... For the majority of people out there, you can understand the science, the biology, it's all explainable, but it's very simple. It's very, very simple. Your thyroid hormone does not control what you put in your face. Only your hands do. So do not blame your thyroid gland for your morbid obesity or for your diabetes. That's bullshit. Unless, as I said, little hands come out of your neck and pick up food and put it in your face, you cannot blame your, your uh, thyroid gland for your carbohydrate addiction, period. It does gov govern metabolic rate, and the healthiest thyroid you can have is one that is free of the pressure and the limitations of insulin resistance by not eating those carbohydrates, number one, and number two is by eating enough global protein to give yourself the tyrosine that you need and adding iodized salt to your diet to give yourself adequate iodine. If you're doing that, your thyroid hormone is out of the equation and you reduce the inflammation from autoimmune disease. Could you still get congenital diseases like an absent uh, production of, thyro of a thyroid gland or a thyroid gland that sits up under the tongue instead of the neck? Of course you can before you're born. Uh, could you get thyroid cancers? Of course you can. Are there other diseases that affect the thyroid? Graves disease, that type of thing, hyperhypothyroidism? Of course there are. But those are trivial relative to the numbers of people who have blood work done and just this, this shotgun blast into the blood work world. And, oh, your thyroid hormone is low. You need to be on this medication. And your doctor knows shit about why it is. Understand the process. Address the cause. And then see if you still need thyroid hormone. It's very, very important that we don't overdrug ourselves and that we correct this fine interplay in our metabolic pathway 
to keep us healthy. I focused on the metabolic aspect of thyroid disease. Of course, there are others. That's what we do for a living. You take someone's thyroid gland out for cancer, of course, they need to be on hormone replacement. But understanding that sensitive feedback pathway, you understand metabolism. Do the right thing. Don't eat carbohydrates.